Here's your wrestling news for July 12th, 2022. And we're kicking off today with Monday Night Raw, as Brock Lesnar was in town last night and left a path of destruction in his wake. Kicking off the show, Lesnar was interrupted by Paul Heyman, Theory, and the Alpha Academy, and despite being outnumbered by Otis and Chad Gable, was able to power through. On Twitter, fans reacted to Lesnar's display of power, as well as his upcoming match with Roman Reigns, with some saying that although their feud is often repetitive, it's still enjoyable. Some fans didn't share this opinion, with one saying they'd rather watch Summer League basketball than Brock vs. Reigns again, while another called throwing Mr. Money in the Bank theory into the mix embarrassing. Other fans simply marveled at Lesnar's strength and couldn't help but notice how much he has improved on the mic over the past year. Lesnar has vowed to destroy Reigns, who he's called the Tribal Hog, and at SummerSlam, slaughtering hogs is something the grizzled farmer slash wrestler knows a thing or two about. Brock's matches are incredibly rare and he hasn't officially competed since WrestleMania 38, but the Beast Incarnate proved that he's not lost a step on last night's Raw. More from Raw as the Judgment Day have been around for a few months now, but their run, despite starting off hot, has cooled down significantly. WWE made the right call this week having Finn Balor defeat Rey Mysterio, but it's hard to ignore how poorly the group has been handled. Ever since Finn Balor took over the group and Rhea Ripley got injured, it has been increasingly more difficult to take the team seriously. Their momentum, especially compared to the run with Edge as leader, has slowed down considerably, though they have been trying to lure in Dominic Mysterio as of late. While nothing was definitive this week, it seems like a huge betrayal is being planned for Dominic against his father Ray, a turn fans have been speculating on ever since Dominic's in-ring debut two years ago. The audience and nearly every critic out there can see that Dominic Mysterio was put on the main roster way too soon, and WWE's need to keep him tied to his father has, unfortunately, slowed his progress. It's hard to learn how to be WWE's next big single star under the spotlight, and especially when the company won't let you be apart from your more beloved, more successful father. The writing is on the wall now that he will likely join Judgment Day and turn on Ray, and while it's not guaranteed to help Dominic, it'll be something completely new for the youngster. The odds of him failing as a heel may be greater than the odds of him being a success, but after two years and no changes to his character, something different needs to be pushed. Dominic will bring very little star power to the group, nor will he bring credibility and may even be a liability for the struggling faction. Whatever comes next, something needs to happen to make the Judgment Day more of a threat, but it may not be by recruiting Dominic Mysterio. Speaking of struggling feuds, AJ Styles' feud with The Miz and Champa took a turn this week, as nothing seems to be built for the feud. From the Miz TV segment to the tag team match starring Ezekiel and Styles against Miz and Champa, everything seemed off about Styles' program last night, and it was one of the weaker parts of the show. Logan Paul will be returning next week to add some gusto to the feud, and while a tag match pitting Styles and Paul against Miz and Champa is likely for SummerSlam, the buildup has been poor for what should have been one of the biggest matches on the card. Now for decades, wrestling fans have brought signs to events, signifying which wrestlers are their favorites and least favorites on the card. Some fans have become synonymous for holding signs, with rich sign guy Ackberger being instantly recognizable for his red hat and blue top, but now WWE has brought in a major change. On Twitter, Jerry Massey, who attended last night's edition of Raw, tweeted that there would be no signs on the show, as WWE were confiscating them all before letting fans in. Massey also provided photographic evidence behind this claim and said how times have certainly changed from the days where it seemed everyone in the crowd had a sign. WWE haven't explained why they've banned signs on this week's show, but it may be due to a fan recently bringing in a pro Sasha Banks and Naomi placard that made it to air. The company would later Photoshop that sign, which is now completely blank, and while some signs did make it into the show, many were taken from members of the WWE Universe. Now, the allegations against Vince McMahon are incredibly serious, as he is reported to have paid $12 million to silence four women. In at least one case, McMahon is alleged to have coerced a female wrestler into oral sex, only to demote her when they refused further advances, but not everyone is too concerned. Speaking on the True Jordy podcast, Chris Jericho claimed that McMahon is just a dude, and that his actions aren't too out of the ordinary. Vince is just a lad at heart, 
He's just a fucking dude. And yes, he's very intimidating. And he's a billionaire. And he's, you know, the creator of this massive, iconic company. But deep down, he's just a dude that likes to hang out, he likes to joke, and he likes to drink. He's surrounded by yes men, as most guys in that position are. He doesn't want yes men, and I had a really good relationship with him. Jericho has also said that he doesn't expect McMahon to lose his role as WWE CEO and chairman, which he has temporarily stepped down from. McMahon has vowed to respect the results of the investigation, even if it costs him his role in the company. But as far as Jericho is concerned, the chairman's actions is just an example of boys will be boys. It was just a few days ago that the Wall Street Journal gave an update on the situation, claiming that McMahon had been inappropriate with three more women. After the initial report of misconduct from last month, that brings the total to four women and $12 million, but reporters who broke the news believe there could be much more to come. Apparently, three more female wrestlers who were with WWE from 2007 to 2010 have come forward and spoken about McMahon's alleged sexual harassment. To be clear, these three women are different from the three women referenced last week, and if you include the initial allegation, that brings our total to seven women. All three women from the most recent allegations provided what's being called solid proof against McMahon, and one had even wanted to speak up during the Me Too movement but was afraid for her life and future career prospects. Reporters Joe Palazzolo and Ted Mann of the Wall Street Journal are currently investigating this matter and also the authenticity of the proofs submitted. Appearing on Busted Open Radio, Palazzolo and Mann did not identify the three women, but when asked if even more allegations were expected, Palazzolo said, we're probably not done yet. Neither reporter said that they were surprised by the news, arguing that the Mr. McMahon character Vince plays on screen isn't too different to real life, so these reports shouldn't come as a shock to anyone familiar with his work. Palazzolo added that anyone doing business with WWE has a close eye on the scandal, and it wouldn't be hard to see why. McMahon hasn't spoken with either reporter from the Wall Street Journal, and when asked what they'd like to say to Vince, Mann said he'd want to know why he paid all the money and whether there were more payments the public doesn't know about. McMahon is unlikely to speak to the Journal, although it would be an absolute bombshell if he chose to, but we'll just have to keep following this case until the investigation into the ex-CEO concludes. Speaking of investigations, it's not just Vince McMahon under scrutiny, but the entirety of WWE. WWE is facing several investigations, alleging that the company should have noted their investors into the investigation of McMahon long before they read about the allegations in the Wall Street Journal. Now, yet another investigation has begun, as Philadelphia's Kiskela Law LLC is looking into how WWE does business on behalf of investors. The firm is looking for investors who lost money after the news of the McMahon allegations broke to try and determine if the company breached their fiduciary duties in not disclosing the scandal. While McMahon has reportedly been acting like nothing has changed, more and more firms are joining the fight against WWE, and we'll have to see what the now eight investigations into WWE conclude about the promotion. When John Cena returned to WWE last month, fans thought it would be the start of something big for the beloved wrestler. For months, Cena had gone back and forth on social media with Theory, then the United States Champion, and rumors circulated that it would be Cena versus Theory for the title at SummerSlam. That isn't the case, as Theory will now challenge new US Champion Bobby Lashley at the July 30th event, with Big Match John nowhere to be seen. Brian Alvarez of Wrestling Observer Live reports that the reason behind Cena's absence is that he's too busy filming Peacemaker Season 2 in Canada. This is why Cena didn't tease any match at SummerSlam on his most recent Raw appearance, and this isn't the first time the show has come first, as Cena missed WrestleMania 37 to film Season 1. Peacemaker, based off of Cena's character in the 2021 Suicide Squad movie, has been an absolute hit for HBO Max and DC Comics, and while fans would love to see John back in the ring, that's not happening this summer. Or for Raw, as for days before this week's show, it was advertised that US Champion Bobby Lashley would be issuing an open challenge, but that match didn't take place. Shortly after the show got underway, it was made clear that the original match wasn't happening, and this wasn't the only plan for the night that got altered. 
There had also been plans for a singles match between Riddle and Theory, but instead, fans got an unadvertised tag match, which saw Riddle and Lashley against Theory and Seth Rollins, the latter of whom presumably was booked to answer the US title open challenge. Theory also appeared in the opening segment of the night when Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman were going back and forth on the mic, where he promised yet again to cash in money in the bank at SummerSlam. This is hardly the first time WWE has pulled the plug on a match, as a Money in the Bank qualifier between Ezekiel and Kevin Owens never took place, and was changed for a qualifying battle royal that Riddle won. It's unclear why exactly these changes were made, though it's worth noting that Vince McMahon has remained in charge of creative despite the allegations into him, so it seems that the ex-chairman is to blame for these edits to the show. There was a time when Marty Skrull was one of the hottest talents in the wrestling industry, but that all changed a few years ago. In early 2020, it was revealed that Skrull had a sexual encounter with a 16-year-old girl, and since then, the ex-Ring of Honor star has been virtually blacklisted from the US. Now though, he has an indie booking, as on Twitter, Santino Marella announced Skrull for his August 13th battle arts show in Mississauga, Ontario. Fans didn't waste time in responding with a slew of negative comments, as it seems nobody is excited to see Skrull on the show. As of this time, Skrull is still booked for the show, but we wouldn't be surprised if Santino quickly changed the card. As for Skrull, many had assumed that he would be joining several of his friends in AEW, but that isn't happening, and the once acclaimed wrestler will have to continue to struggle finding bookings due to his past. Now, as a 14-year veteran of WWE's main roster, Natalya is one of the company's longest tenuring superstars and is in many respects a model employee. The former SmackDown Women's Champion can often be seen in public appearances speaking about WWE and the company's success, which makes her behavior at a recent live event very odd. At the recent live event in Sacramento, California, Natalya faced Ronda Rousey and SmackDown Women's Champion Liv Morgan, but took the pinfall loss to Morgan. What happened after the pinfall was strange, as the Canadian veteran seemingly broke character, standing up immediately after being pinned, and began pointing and shouting at Morgan. Responding to a clip of her character-breaking performance, Natalia said she was breaking character again by tweeting about the incident, and revealed that she was thanking Morgan for the match. This tweet didn't last long, however, as Natalia quickly deleted it in another bizarre move. With her nearly 15 years on WWE TV and her heritage as part of the Hart family, Natalia is well respected by her fans and peers, but her actions this past weekend were incredibly strange for her. More live event news as just a day after the Sacramento show, Natalia was in Reno, Nevada for Sunday Stunner alongside some of WWE's top current superstars. Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, Ronda Rousey, and The Usos were all at the event, but perhaps the biggest name didn't appear in front of the fans. On Twitter, Natalia revealed that Stone Cold Steve Austin made the trip to Reno for the show, calling him the coolest part of the night. Austin confirmed Natalia's claim, saying that Reno was damn good crowd and that the current roster gave the fans a hell of a show. 2022 has been a huge year for the Texas Rattlesnake, who had his first match in nearly 20 years at WrestleMania in April, and Austin had the best seat in the house this past weekend in Reno, Nevada. When Maurice returned to WWE Raw last month to promote Miz and Mrs., she did a lot more than just praise her show. After the size of Miz's testicles were mocked by Riddle, Maurice interjected that her husband has massive balls, which is now available on a t-shirt. For just $27.99, fans can declare that they too have massive balls, though if you do, don't be surprised if you're accused of overcompensating. And we're ending today with Dave Bautista, who has become a success in Hollywood as Drax the Destroyer for Marvel, and now the WWE legend is back in that role. Mike Johnson of PW Insider reports that Bautista was spotted in Epcot filming content for the new ride Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. The ride was originally opened in May, but has now been updated to include Drax, as Batista's character remains as popular as ever. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.